Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. Today we'll move on to chapter 3 in the syllabus, the circulatory system, starting with part 1, the components of blood. Clicking on the banner will take you to the anatomy and physiology playlist, where you can find complete lessons on every topic included in the syllabus, titled according to the contents page of your Cambridge textbook. As always, we'll be covering absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam, so our learning objectives today are to identify the different components of blood, to understand the role of haemoglobin, and to describe the structure of the blood vessels and their functions. We'll begin with a brief introduction of the circulatory system, which can be defined as the body's transport system that consists of the lungs, heart, blood vessels, and blood. You'll know if you've watched my previous videos that the role of the respiratory system is to draw air into the lungs so that oxygen can pass into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide can be removed from it. Once the respiratory system has done its job, the circulatory system takes over. The heart pumps blood through a network of blood vessels, delivering oxygen to the body's tissues. Oxygen can then be used to produce energy, enabling our muscles to contract, providing movement. Now we'll study the heart in our next lesson, but today we need to gain an understanding of the blood and the blood vessels. Put simply, blood is a liquid containing four components, plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, each of which have a specific role to play. It's actually possible to separate these components by spinning a blood sample in a centrifuge machine. The heavier components sink to the bottom, allowing us to see the relative proportions of each. We'll start with the plasma, which is a straw-colored liquid that consists mainly of water. Because it flows easily, the main function of the plasma is to transport gases, nutrients, waste products, and the other components of the blood to where they are needed. The red blood cells are primarily there to transport oxygen. They contain a substance called haemoglobin that reacts with oxygen from the lungs, forming oxyhemoglobin. When they reach their final destination, the working muscles for example, the oxygen splits from the haemoglobin and diffuses into the cells. Our white blood cells form part of the immune system and are there to defend the body against disease-causing organisms or pathogens such as bacteria and viruses. They do so by engulfing them or by producing antibodies to attack them. Finally, we have the platelets. They contain an enzyme that causes the blood to clot whenever a blood vessel is damaged. If it weren't for the platelets, there would be nothing to stop the cut or graze from bleeding, and the wound would stay open, making it easy for pathogens to enter the bloodstream. So now that we've gained an understanding of the blood, we need to take a look at how it's transported around the body so that it can perform its functions. There are three groups of blood vessels that work together to form a vast network throughout the body, and we'll take a look at the arteries first, which transport typically oxygenated blood away from the heart. Every time the heart beats, it forces blood into the arteries at high pressures, enabling the blood to reach even the most distant tissues. Arteries therefore have thick muscular walls to cope with this pressure, while the lumen or space within the vessels is narrow, increasing the efficiency of blood transportation. Once the blood reaches a tissue, such as a muscle, the arteries branch off into tiny blood vessels called capillaries. The primary role of these vessels is to allow nutrients, gases and waste products to move from the blood and into the cells, and vice versa. To support this function, they have extremely thin walls, one cell thick in fact, and a very narrow lumen that serves to slow the blood down, allowing molecules to diffuse more efficiently. Now, since oxygen moves from the blood and into the tissues, the blood that flows out of the capillaries has now become deoxygenated. It's also lost much of its pressure at this point and needs some assistance to get back to the heart. Fortunately, the veins are designed to provide just that. They have a much wider lumen than arteries, allowing blood to flow without resistance, and also contain valves, which prevent low pressure blood from flowing backwards due to gravity. Now there was plenty of information packed into this one, so well done if you managed to keep up. Pause the video now if you'd like to compare what you've learned to the knowledge checklist, and make sure you come back and revisit the lesson if there's anything you haven't grasped yet. Finally, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications every time a lesson is posted, and feel free to leave a question in the comments section if there's anything you're unsure of. As always, I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one.